Good evening, and welcome to the Tuesday, June 11th, 2013 school board meeting. If you would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm aware of one adjustment to the agenda. We're going to move. We have a busy working principal uh, with us tonight, and we're going to move <laughs> item 6A up to uh, I, uh, item 3. Are there any other adjustments? OK. Um, item 2, approval of school board minutes. May I have a motion? David. I move that we approve the school board minutes as uh, generally described in paragraph 2A through E of our agenda and as attached. Second. Second. Thank you, Joe. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, then. Then we're moving right on to item three. And we have the Pond Cove Principal of the Day here with us today. And I understand from my fourth grader that the Principal of the Day did a fabulous job today. I heard from kindergarten that he rocked, so. Good evening. My name is Silas Richard, and I was principal of the day at Pond Cove School today. I want to report to all of you what has been happening at Pond Cove School. We had field day for grades 2, 3, and 4 last week. First grade field day will be tomorrow. We also had fourth grade celebration last week, Friday. I had fun being principal of Pond Cove today. My day began with saying the announcements over the decom next. I went around to all the classrooms making sure everyone was following my rules and doing their work. My rules for school today were that it was okay to chew gum one piece at a time, wear a crazy hat, and say at least one kind thing to someone else. I gave a tour of the school to a new family this morning. I also read some poems to a third grade class. I like grades one through four watch a movie during lunch in the cafeteria. I went in to make sure everyone was having a good time. The adults said that was the quietest first grade lunch ever. During the day, I, paid, I play, played I'm Walking on Sunshine over the intercom for a few minutes to let everyone get up and dance. I invited my brother Sawyer to eat pizza with Mrs. Hassan and me for lunch in my new office. I ended up, I, I ended my day helping with bus dismissal. I had a great day as principal of Pond Cove. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank can you, you. Can you stay for a minute? Because we may have questions for you from the school board. Okay. <laughs> Kate? Well, Silas, I'd like to take a picture of you from this angle so that we can see you at the podium. Is that okay? Yeah. So it's posted in the Kate Courier. Okay. Uh, or uh, whatever newspaper I'll submit it to. <laughs> if it may be to your mother's refrigerator. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Sure. And while you're posing, you said that um, you, were, you went to every classroom and you checked to see that the students were following your rules? Yeah. Were they? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. <laughs> well done. Any other questions? I wonder, where the music choice? Why that song? Um, it was kind of just a random choice, and it was rainy out that day, so we thought it would be appropriate for that. Good choice. The sunshine. It's one of my favorites. Do you have any visitors at lunchtime, Silas? <laughs> um, not really. <laughs> I thought there was a middle school student, maybe. Oh, yeah. My brother Cully came down and um, <laughs> visited me. Got special permission from uh, yeah. the school administration. And so what do you think of the principal's job? Is it a hard job or an easy job? It was fun. It was fun. It was pretty. <laughs> That's good. All right. Well, thank you very much for your service today. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Watch out, Kelly. 
<laughs> All right, moving on to item four, comments from the public on agenda items. Do we have any comments from the public on items on the school board agenda tonight? Seeing none, I will move on to item five, recognition of our retirees. Meredith? So I think we're going to have Kelly Hassan start, and she's going to be speaking about our Pond Cove nurse, Paula Harris, who is retiring. The font on mine is much larger than my successor was uh, had hit on his. Um, I am here to honor Paula Harris, who's been an indelible part of Pond Cove School as our school nurse for 20 years. And in her role as school nurse, she's provided medical care, comfort, TLC to hundreds of children, and has provided countless, countless hours of reassurance to parents, family members, guardians, and she's also been a staunch advocate and role model for our wellness policies and programs. On a personal note, Paula and I worked together for 12 years when I was a teacher at Pond Cove. So it's really been a privilege to return to Pond Cove and be her principal for her last year before she retires. So it's really been just a pleasure. Um, it I really has been a marvel to watch her in action all of these years to see her establish the trusting relationships that are so necessary for a school nurse, in addition to having that, those essential skills that you need to assess quality care for children who are injured, who are ill, and to really provide that, those relationships with families and outside providers. She's really just been an, just an incredible, incredible part of our family at Pond Cove, and we were going to miss her, but we do wish her a happy, and of course very healthy, and adventurous, um, experiences on ahead into her retirement. And so Paula, we really, on behalf of all of us at Ponco, we're really gonna miss you. And we thank you so, so much for your service. And I'll ask Mr. Purley to come up to introduce the middle school retirees. Thank you. Middle school has two retirees this year, uh, Sherry Gower and Mr. Paul Casey. <coughs> and I'd just like to say very, very quickly and, and just very briefly that um, I've enjoyed working with them from my first year, and it's, it's been a pleasure uh, to, get, to get to know them. And as I prepared for tonight, and as, we talk, as I talked about tonight with the two of them uh, and realizing that this is my first year with them, I asked if they had a couple members of the staff that uh, they had become close to over the years and maybe valued uh, their friendships and would like to have them speak on their behalf in, in my place. Each of them did pick a staff member uh, that they've come to know and love over the years, and I think uh, we're going to start off. Mr. Doan, we're going to start off? Mr. Doan will start off uh, on speaking on behalf of Sherry Gower. <laughs> that it is a clown team. I'm Joe Doan. I'm a sixth grade teacher. Um, I'm going to speak on behalf of my good friend Sherry Gower tonight. Um, Sherry came in looking for a little sympathy right off the bat and said when I first started, my hair wasn't white. I just gave her a glare and said, at least you have hair. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, Sherry, no... no no, nothing there. Um, it's, a, it's an exciting time right now. It's always the end of the year. The kids are excited. Uh, the teachers are excited. Things are winding down. I've always found it to be bittersweet. Um, this is the time of year when people do retire, and we lose some good friends. And on, on tonight's occasion, we're losing um, two of my closest. I've been with Paul Casey for about 25 years, coach with them. Going to miss him dearly. Um, as well as Sherry Gower, who's been in the system for 25 years, but came over to the middle school about five years ago um, and really, really has done a great job for us. I want to run some numbers by you. 3,960, that's the number of lunch duty Sherry Gower has done. 9,000 recesses, that's how many recesses she's done. Um, and some, you know, many people say that's a big deal. I, I would say if someone asked me what's the toughest part of my day, I'd say Tuesday, first of all, when I have recess duty, uh, that, that's tough. Lunch duty on Wednesdays can, can be an absolute zoo if you don't do it the right way. And I have only done maybe a third of what Sherry has done. Um, but I'll tell you what, in order to do lunch duty and recess duty, you've got to bring your A game. You've got to be, be really on. And I will say this, that Sherry Gower 
uh, she was second to none. Um, if there was a time that we wanted to leave one person alone in the cafeteria, um, I would have nominated her because she could handle it. And <laughs> did, did an outstanding job. But what people uh, really, Sherry's goal was for the children to be safe. And if, if, if the children are going to be safe during lunch and recess, you have to be fair and firm. And I found that, and I learned that from her. Um, you don't make a lot of friends during lunch and recess. You, didn't, you don't win a lot of popularity contests. You're putting out brush fires. Um, you're putting out a bunch of things, kid, telling a kid to take the thumb out of his buddy's sandwich or don't throw, don't throw Cheetos at the table across the way. So there's a lot of things. So it's not an easy thing to do. And she did a great, great job with that. Um, it, it's just, it was just, it's just an honor to have her, you know, to, to work with us. Um, she gave us 25 years in the system. At a time when you watch, loyalty is not always abundant in society. And Sherry gave us 25 years. She's very loyal to her town. You'll find her here when, when the voting comes up. Um, and always, always on duty. I, the thing I loved about recess duty is um, my goal is this. Sixth grade goes to Chewankee every year. And you better be sure on Tuesday, if, it's, if there's a hurricane we're going out, we're getting these kids ready. And I used to just wait to watch Sherry come out of the service entrance. And I could tell by the walk, she's not happy. She's not happy. And, and, and really, I could watch her walk right across. She wouldn't, the other day, she wouldn't speak to me. All right? And, um, but she got it at the end. We had a real, real, really good time um, out there. We talked a lot together. Um, and again, we, we, we're one of the few that share the same political views. There aren't many of us around Sherry that do that, uh, which was good. But Sherry also uh, was a librarian, um, also was a sub and also did a lot of the photocopying and things that teachers needed. In fact, I think, I think she worked for me one week, and that almost forced her into early retirement about three years ago with the stuff that I gave her. But she was always willing to help out, um, and, 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 and a great friend. And I think what I loved about, most about Sherry was she was in the library at the end. Um, the middle school, we don't spend a lot of time, enough time, socializing, talking with our peers, and enjoying ourselves. We're, so, we're, we're pretty much working hard all the time. Sherry and I would often go down to the library, talk about the socks. There are the passion, Florida. Um, so it really, Sherry, you really made me stop and slow down a bit and really enjoy the day. And I really, lo really loved our time in the library together. It was a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. I guess if I could pay Sherry the ultimate compliment, if I was going to start a school, she'd be my number one draft choice. She proved she can do it all. Um, she did it with a smile, did it with humor. She'd also let me know what I'm doing wrong, all right, all the time, all right. But it was just great to have her aboard. But she's going to be sadly missed. But um, Sherry, thanks for all, all the great years. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, first question I got from Sherry tonight was, did you stay up last night for all of it? <laughs> a Red Sox fan forever. Um, I want to thank Doug and um, the school board for the chance to, to speak about Paul. Um, uh, it's just an honor and a privilege to recognize a man who's dedicated 38 years of his life to teaching. Um, undoubtedly the world's greatest profession. Um, Paul Casey spent his inaugural year at Kennebunk Junior High. We remember when things were called junior highs. Uh, and then the next 13 years in SAD 6, teaching grades 2, 3, 4, and 6. Uh, he was also Bonnie Eagle High School's girls varsity cross country coach um, for those years. But for the last 24 years, he's called Cape Elizabeth Middle School his home. And we are richer because of it. Um, he arrived here in the fall of 1989, and he faced the daunting task of replacing a sixth grade legend, a man who had shifted over into his guidance role, the infamous Rick Madden. I've done this in Rick Madden's scrawl tonight in his honor. After a challenging first year, Paul went on to serve Cape Elizabeth Middle School faithfully in a number of capacities, all of which speak directly to his strengths, which are passion, versatility, flexibility, and leadership. First of all, he taught multiple grade levels, grade six, seventh, and eighth, flipping back, forth, seamlessly. He taught multiple content areas, language arts, social studies, math, executive functioning services, RTI, experiential learning. Serving the Cape Elizabeth community beyond the classroom in such extracurricular activities and assignments as student council advisor, Chowanke coordinator, he was a Chewankee counselor for 22 of the 24 years, most often when not a sixth grade teacher. And that means making a, a week long of lesson plans to go and make an effort to be with and meet 
his next year's students. Um, he founded and coached the first Cape Elizabeth Middle School indoor track program, along with Cape Elizabeth High School teacher Ray Cooper. He coached boys and girls cross country with a man next to me for 11 years. He coached spring track for nine years. Paul, I congratulate you on a stellar career. I had the opportunity many times to watch you coach and teach and talk about how you did it. Every day you brought positive attitude, an ability to differentiate lessons, a passion for building positive relationships with all the students and the athletes entrusted to your care. I know I speak for the entire staff of the middle school when I say well done, best of luck. We will miss you. As Joe says, it's bittersweet, but at the same time, we are most happy for you. Thanks for all you've done for the kids of my hometown, the eagerness and the fervor that went with it. Personally, you know what an incredible source of inspiration you have been for me. Thanks, Paul Casey. Jeff Shedd will be speaking about retiring high school uh, librarian Joyce Bell. Maybe. Off the cuff, apparently. Uh, she has been a huge contributor of Cape Elizabeth High School for quite a few years. Um, so I want to start off by saying this, that um, in the last time we had a NEASC report, which is the accreditation report that we get um, every 10 years, um, the report of the visiting committee summarized the, the role of the library in Cape Elizabeth High School as the academic hub of the school which I think is really true um, and is really a testament to the work that Joyce has done uh, herself and in coordination with the teachers in the school to make the library exactly that. Um, Joyce in many ways has acted as the glue among teachers to bring them together. Sometimes she, she because she works with a whole bunch of different teachers, she will often uh, be aware that one teacher in one department is doing something that might connect to something that somebody else is doing or a project that perhaps could be a little bit better coordinated in terms of timing. Um, and she will, uh, she will bring those people together. So she acts as a real important kind of networking um, hub uh, of the school. Um, she's been instrumental the last few years in, in driving the English and Social Studies Department closer together in terms of how they define their roles in teaching kids research skills, uh, which used to be fairly fragmented, and it's still not perfect, but it's getting closer. Um, she has been around for a long enough time that she probably is not a native to computers, but she has taken them up and worked her tail off to get up to speed to the point now that she really pushes teachers, uh, particularly in the use of technology with respect to research. So she has brought noodle tools into the school district. Um, she created, when we went to iPads, uh, she was the driving force behind creating an, an iPad compatible EPUB version of her research handbook, which has been the product of many, many, many years of work. So it makes it just much more accessible to students. She um, has been a driving force in terms of for about making literacy a centerpiece of what happens in the school for many, many years, um, long predating um, when it was formally made a, a sort of a T target goal area by the school board a few years ago. So she had created the, what had been known as the Book Talk Club and what has evolved into Books and Bagels, uh, which brings together kids who read common books and, and talk about them. Um, she coordinated virtually single-handedly when I abandoned her um, almost all of the literary, literacy week activities uh, this year. And she has spent a lot of time recently um, beefing up the collection in the school library that appeals to students of lower reading abilities, uh, for whom reading is a bit more of a struggle, which is huge. She is also completely inflappable, um, unflappable. Um, I well remember um, when my, I, I was principal first in 2001, uh, which meant that there was a baptism by fire on September 11th uh, when planes started crashing into the World Trade Center. And the first place I went to was Joyce because I had no idea what TVs, what technology. I knew that I wanted to bring 
to disrupt the school day and provide students an opportunity to see what was going on and talk about what was going on. Um, she just sort of took it under a wing with Andrea, her um, library assistant at the time, and TVs were quickly strung sort of throughout the school and kids are watching, watching that everywhere. Um, and I could go on and on about her, but she has just an, has been an absolute resource to the school, a gem of a librarian, and she's proving to be very difficult to replace, but we're working hard at it. Uh, but she's just done a great job. So thank you for her many years of service to the students of Cape Elizabeth. So thank you to our speakers, and um, but we will move into a, an intermission, but before we do, um, we have uh, some tokens of our appreciation, which could only be tokens. Uh, it's many years of service um, that uh, we, we, we couldn't possibly represent with a, a single gift, but um, we do have tokens of our appreciation here um, for our retirees. Um, the first one is for Paula Harris, who's not here. Oh, she is here. I'm sorry, Paula. You were. Very <laughs> just very tall. Um, and Paula, on your behalf, a donation has been made to the Barbara Bush Children's Hospital. So thank you. Next we have um, Sherry. Here, but she selected a watercolor as well. Mm. Well, I'll trust that to me, And now we will take a, a brief intermission in order uh, for board members to have a chance to congratulate and thank our retirees in person.
be there in 10 minutes. I wonder if it's It's unbelievable. I wasn't sure anyone would notice. I did, eventually. Pretty amazing. Are these on? No. Sometimes it's Let's hard. whip through this stuff. Let's whip, whip, go, go, go. Okay. Um, so moving forward into um, communications item 6B, the annual report of volunteer <laughs> services. We have Gail Schmader here. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's been a great year. We've had over 900 volunteers supported, who supported our 1,700 students in all aspects of their education. These volunteers gave the school the equivalent of about $265,000 through approximately 18,000 hours of service. My guess is this is probably a low number, um, but I had to start someplace. Um, these figures don't include the many hours of volunteer support from the parents' associations, the extracurricular, and the booster club activities. So that would take the number well over what I've reported out. The community donated over $8,000 worth of tangible resources, not including the many classroom supplies that are donated on a weekly basis throughout the year. Donated resources ranged from treadmills and mini trampolines for the OTPT programs, one came in today, to an aquarium with all the equipment for the functional life skills program. The most donated items this year were tennis balls. <laughs> The custodial staff requested 20,000 tennis balls to quiet the chair and desk legs and to protect the floors at Pond Cove in the middle school. <coughs> Through multiple donations, we've reached the halfway mark, 10,000 balls. Many thanks, Elizabeth, for your many donations. <laughs> I got you there. I got you. As we spoke during intermission, we have the promise of many more, so thank you. Uh, there was strong volunteer support for many projects. Copycats volunteered weekly to Pond Cove, or at Pond Cove, to photocopy academic materials. Similar support was provided at the middle school. These volunteers were gold. A committed core of 17 volunteers provided critical support in the libraries, helping with all aspects of the library's operation. An enthusiastic couple in their mid-80s returned for their ninth year to the Pond Cove Library to shelve books. One student asked them, do you own the school? <laughs> <laughs> Seeing them weekly, thinking perhaps they did own the school. And in fact, they're Cape residents and do own a piece of the school. Um, another community member tutored high school physics students weekly for the fifth year. 17 land trust volunteers provided many opportunities for meaningful hands-on learning. One project focused on the fourth grade. Each class visited Robinson Woods three times during the year. They studied the seasonal changes in the environment and the wildlife, with many stories to tell at home in the evening. Um, 44 high school mentors provided support for Pond Cove and middle school students. 
They met with their mentee 40 minutes once a week and focused on social, emotional, and or academic needs. It's an honor and a privilege to work with the high school mentors. Thanks, Jeff, for sending them our way. They're making a humble difference one by one by one for our kids. Many of us want to make a difference. These mentors do it, and it means a lot to them. The kids they mentor gain a sense of self-worth. Someone, in addition to their family and teachers, care about them. This makes a difference for them. Each mentor attends a training session and signs a confidentiality statement. All adult volunteers are required to successfully complete the following before volunteering. One, a criminal record check, which was fully implemented as of January 2nd this year. Currently, we have 670 volunteers who have record checks that have been processed. 480 of these checks were processed this year. So this year we've processed about 72% of all of the record checks. Um, Kathy Maxwell has been busy in central office. Number two, they need to complete an annual registration form, which includes a confidentiality statement. Number three, they need to attend one awa volunteer awareness session. We have approximately 81% of students that have at least one parent who has attended a session. And four, for community members only, a volunteer application, including requests for references, are required. Presenters or performers working under the direction of a staff member are exempt from these um, requirements. We feel that they are well supervised. It's usually a one-time opportunity. Parents complete these forms online through PowerSchool, and the community members access the form on the CAPE website. We're very fortunate, I believe, to have so many committed volunteers. I think they're just one of the many strengths of the Cape Schools. Um, there's a full report in your packet. At your leisure, feel free to look through it. Um, if you have questions now, I'll certainly field those. That's great. Thank you for your work, Gail. You're welcome. My pleasure. My pleasure. Great to see so many people in the schools. and. That, um, Particularly that mentor program I think is so valuable and I appreciate all that it takes to, to pull everybody together. Thanks. I get the, it's fun. It's yeah. just a lot of fun. So thank you. you. You can reach me on email if you have questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Where are we? Okay. <coughs> Item 6C, Educational Technician Authorization <coughs> Renewal Plan. Um, so, as you, I believe, are aware, we have a teacher certification renewal plan. That's how our district um, provides for teacher recertification. And um, over the last year, we have talked about what that mechanism might look like for our educational technicians. Um, it's been done in slightly different ways in prior years here in the district. So, a group of folks put their heads together and have a proposal to share with you. And uh, you'll have the opportunity to ask any questions. And then, um, ideally, we will adopt this and send it forward to um, the certification department at the Department of Education for approval. So, Mark, I'll let you start. I am Mark Ash. I teach at the high school. I'm the uh, Cape Elizabeth Education Association president and also the uh, Cape Elizabeth Ed Education Association representative to the Teacher Certification Committee. Uh, so as Meredith mentioned, you know, as you know, the teachers have their own certification local process and committee that processes all of the activities that teachers do to satisfy the 90 hours that they have to do every five years to maintain their certification. So there was a desire on the part of EdTechs uh, to have a similar process. Um, as you know, our ed techs do probably have some of the most difficult jobs in our district, uh, and they work incredibly hard. And we thought that, and they thought that this would be a great opportunity for them to come together and to have a more focused process for them to uh, get their reauthorization uh, every five years. So, um, even though Mary Bruns is unfortunately leaving us uh, through her infinite grace and kindness, she worked with a group of uh, ed techs. Uh, Catherine Kelsey, Tier Hilary Roberts, and Liz Campbell. 
to put together a plan that would satisfy the state requirements and essentially give our ed techs an avenue to go through a local system as opposed to going directly to the state education department. So essentially this system mirrors what the teachers have. It sets, creates a committee of four members. One of them will be the new certification chair. Uh, and then there will be two ed tech representatives and a, a, an association representative. And essentially what ed techs will do is they'll submit their proposals for what they're gonna do for professional growth. And the committee has set forth a series of standards uh, for activities that will be uh, acceptable. And then that committee will approve or send back and say, uh, sounds like we need more information on this. And then they'll tailor it and send it back to the committee. And ultimately, at the end of that process, at the end of uh, the five years, each ed tech uh, will have their authorization signed off for by the committee, and that will be sent off to the state ed department. So the plan in its entirety is incorporated in your packet, but you'll see um, there's a high, the changes are highlighted in red. So there's a change in the introduction. The most substantive change, um, which is the new information for educational technicians begins on page 16 and is outlined primarily on page 16 and 17. And then there's an additional form um, included uh, at the back. Yes, yeah, so I think this is included as an addendum to the, the existing certification plan that, that includes the teacher's process. Are there any questions? I have okay. Question. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about this. The, it's the responsibility of the, teach, the ed tech to know the, <coughs> to research what they need to do to be responsible for giving it to the committee. They're ultimately responsible for their own professional growth and making sure they have all the standards. And then, so the committee is not spending time. The committee is just helping um, check things off with them and then recommending it to re making sure that work is given to Meredith, who's ultimately responsible? No, the committee actually itself has that responsibility, which is really how the system works. I mean, it, again, it recognizes sort of the professionalism and the respons personal responsibility that our staff take on. Um, and I think it elevates, by adding the educational technicians, I think it, it, it's sort of elevating and valuing you know, their role in sort of taking on those professional responsibilities. And um, I, I think it's beneficial to have a community of your peers who are giving you feedback about um, the activities maybe you're thinking about, who are a good resource to help point you in other directions maybe if you're struggling to identify what might be a good fit. Um, and who are just well versed in what the expectations are. And they will be a resource to answer questions, to provide information. Um, the, our certification committee folks are known and seen as go-to people in their buildings when folks have questions. And again, um, I think Catherine and Liz and Hillary and uh, Mary Bruns, who worked to put this together, um, gave a lot of thought to what kinds of activities are valuable for educational technicians what will make this both a meaningful process, but also one that's fairly straightforward and streamlined so that it's not causing undue, um, uh, I don't know, complexity, I guess, to a process. And then, it, but it also doesn't include any um, evaluation piece like, a, uh, right, so if there's separate. a, like that's a completely teachers. separate. Right. right, so there's, this is the, it, this is designed for the personal professional growth of teachers and, and now uh, ed techs. So it's also instructive for the committee because you know, it's, it's nice for the, this group to be able to look at all the things that people are doing. And then you can also share that information and those opportunities with other ed techs who, as Meredith said, you know, might be looking for uh, you know, various avenues to expand their, their own skills. Great. Thank you. Other questions? Um, could you clarify for me then, is the committee actually approving the, or providing the certification or is the committee facilitating the, the educational technician's application to the state for certification or recertification? The committee will sign off on the, their application that then goes to the state the same way the teachers do. Okay. 
So, and by signing off, we're telling the state that the committee satisfies the, this, that this satisfies the requirement. Right. And then the state makes its own independent decision, or the state accepts the committee's decision. It does, because they, because we create we the business. that it's done in accordance with the plan that is approved by the Department of Education. Right. So they'll, they'll approve this plan uh, if you do. So who's making that certification approval at this point? Well, the way that it works now is EdTechs can go directly to the state. Okay. Uh, in the past, we've, uh, Mary Bruns has done much of that work where our EdTechs have sat down with her. She's uh, gone through all their activities and then she's sort of written a letter that says, yes, you know, this person has satisfied uh, the state requirements. But in this case, what we're doing now is we're creating a local system. And so now the, we're telling the state that these are the guidelines that we believe are the most beneficial for ed techs in terms of their own professional development. And so that's the track that they'll go through now. So, which gives us greater local control over what, yeah. what, what we think are the priorities for recertification. Yeah. I think gives more input to the people who are doing the work. And I think it also creates a system that no matter who is working here in administration, um, you know, that, that there's a known system that's been approved by the Department of Ed that serves as guidelines for all of us to follow. And I think sometimes when you go through change, as we have seen, um, it can be complicated and um, questions arise. and different interpretations arise, and this uh, sort of eliminates that challenge um, for folks at, at all levels moving forward and by creating sort of a clear, straightforward process for folks to follow. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, on to item 6D, the superintendent's report. Okay. I'll keep it brief. Um, so as uh, Joe Doan stated, the end of year is very busy, and um, in the last month we have celebrated the retirements of um, those folks we just acknowledged tonight. We have been busy with field trips and end of year concerts and award ceremonies and celebrations for our students who are leaving and transitioning from one school to another, um, as well as uh, the graduation of our seniors who are moving on um, to other pursuits. Um, and we also um, are planning our summer professional development work, wrapping up schedules for the coming year, um, all of those very busy um, end of year activities to include um, student placement decisions. So it's also the end of year is a time to, I think, express our appreciation for the parent associations, the booster organizations, the Cape Elizabeth Educational Foundation, our community supporters, businesses, volunteers, parents, um, all of those who help make the school district function as effectively as it does and who really provide us that support to um, not only introduce new activities and ideas, but to support um, those many things that we already have going on in the schools. Um, and it's also a time to um, be appreciative of our staff members, um, you know, from um, our custodial and maintenance staff who will be very busy this summer and making sure schools are ready for us to reopen to our food service staff who um, have worked um, all year to make sure our children were provided with healthy um, meals to our um, teachers and support staff and administrators in the schools every day. Um, it is definitely a collaborative effort and a team effort. And um, as, as we see this year come to a close and wave goodbye to our students, um, I know that all of those folks who work in our schools will be working hard um, during the summer to be ready to welcome um, students when they come back in the fall. So um, thanks to um, all of those folks and to our community um, as well. And uh, summer professional development, I'll just highlight a couple of the things that are coming up. Um, we have uh, curricular work going on in literacy and mathematics and science, and um, we have um, instructional support involved in those activities um, across the board. The middle school is really focusing on some efforts around teaming. Um, technology training is going on, and um, again, for us, we'll be making the transition to iPads at the middle school. 
We already have that in place at the high school, but it's a great opportunity for folks to collaborate and share ideas and reflect on what's worked and hasn't worked. An opportunity for those content folks at the high school who've been working with iPads this past year to pass on some of their expertise to our middle school staff. Um, so thank you to our technology and IT staff who've helped not only coordinate this transition um, at the end of the year from our MLTI existing devices to get ready for our new MLTI devices and transfer, oh, I don't know, 575 plus iPads um, that they've collected back from students at the high school. Uh, you didn't want to see the beach. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, when you think about being one-to-one -one in a district for six of your grade levels, it is an enormous task, and that team has lots of work to do during the summer as well. Um, we have response to intervention work going on with teams from our three schools um, next week. Next week. It's really already here. Um, <laughs> So it will be a busy summer um, for our staff. We look forward to welcoming um, our new employees, and um, we'll be back with lots more information to share in the fall. Thank you. Any questions? OK, moving on to new business, item 7A. May I have a motion? I move we approve an unpaid leave of absence for Rosamond Gross, a high school teacher, during the fall semester of the 2013-2014 school year. Second. Any discussion? Uh, it, it says during. Is it for just the fall year? So it it's is not, the fall semester. So that technically it's a leave of absence for the fall semester. That is accurate. Thank you. I accept your amendment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion as amended? Seven zero. Um, item B, may I have another motion? I move that we approve an unpaid leave of absence for the middle school guidance counselor during the 2013-2014 school year for Gretchen McCloy. Um, second. I'll second. Thank you, Mary. Is there any discussion? I changed during to four again. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion as amended? Seven. Seven. Item C, may I have a motion? I consider we approve the following job descriptions, um, director of instruction, assistant principal for the elementary, assistant principal for the middle school, principal for the middle school, library and instructional technology specialist, and school nurse. Second, Elizabeth. Uh, any discussion? So yes. I'll just note that um, these were positions that had opened up and that part of our um, job description, excuse me, renewal process is when positions become vacant, that we will take a look at those job descriptions. These were incorporated in your last packet as drafts last month, and so we're looking for adoption this evening. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, item D. I move that we approve the personnel nominations for the 2013-2014 academic year. Um, I want to note that listed in our packet are three personnel nominations, but we are actually only nominating two, and that would be for the nurse for Pond Cove and for the K-4 elementary technology teacher, and that we are holding out the library and instructional technology specialist as listed in tonight's agenda. A second? I'll second. Thank you, Mary. Uh, any discussion? So I'll just should have the name. Well, yeah, I'll just okay. note who should those um, people are. Um, so Erin Taylor is the nominee for the Pond Cove nursing position. Um, she is enthusiastically recommended by the hiring committee, which included um, a couple of members of our audience this evening. Um, likewise, Thomas Chaltre is the nominee for the K-4 elementary technology teacher, and he was also enthusiastically endorsed by the hiring team for that position. And again, a couple of members of that hiring team are also in our audience tonight. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Okay, item E, Joe. 
This one goes to you again. Thank you. Um, I would like to um, move that we accept the, the policies listed for second reading and deletion as listed out, and I won't name them all in our packet, item 7E. There's a list for um, second reading, and then there's also a list that is recommended for deletion. Um, should I move on to F as well while I'm here, or take no. them separately? Because there no. one's a second. No, okay. that, that doesn't require a vote. Second? second. Okay. Any discussion? David. Well, what's the difference between a second reading and deletion and, de and then just a deletion? A second reading is w a a a adoption of the policy as school board policy, and a deletion is a deletion of the policy. So the, I guess I'm a little confused. So the first series for second reading and the second series for deletion? That's correct. Because that's not clear. We can divide that if that would be more clear. Well, I, I think it's clear to say the first... Well, they're, they're ten, ten policies were were uh, considering for second reading, and the the, the the policies under the section called recommended for deletion. We are we are deleting. That's correct. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Okay. Item F. Sure. Um, I move that we. Um, we don't need a motion. motion. Just we don't need um, a motion. So I just put forward that there are sections um, 7F lists out uh, policies that we are putting forward for first reading. And under item 7F, there's also a recommendation that we've reviewed and have suggested no changes to a particular policy, GBEBB. And then we are also putting forth for a first set of recommendation reading for deletion a set of policies. And I just want to make clear that should anyone have any comments or suggestions or feedback on any of those policies, whether it be for a first reading and review, um, suggesting for no changes or if they have any further changes, or if there's any feedback on deleting in any of these policies, to please contact myself as chair of the policy committee or to contact Meredith before our next policy meeting, which is to be determined. I think we need to set a date. We need to come up with a, so stay tuned. Probably not the week of July 4th, I'm guessing. I'm guessing no. Early August sometime. Okay. Um, Meredith? I will just briefly note one of these policies, JKAA and um, the accompanying procedures, JKAAR, mm -hmm. Are a policy that we had actually adopted just in September, but due to legislative changes, we needed to make some additional changes to that policy, okay, which you. is related to physical restraint and seclusion of students. I would just note that the uh, GBEBB, we just worked on and adopted yes. recently as well, which is yeah. why we are recommending no changes since we put a lot of effort into that one very recently. Um, Joe and Elizabeth, thank you, um, and, and Meredith, thank you for all the work that you have done um, thank you. to move the. And Kate. And Kate, and Kate. I'm sorry, to move the, this policy review forward. It's it's yeah. it's been a tremendous effort, and um, and you have applied yourself um, professionally to the job, and we appreciate it. Thank you. It's my pleasure. David. I, I, again, it's just because these titles confuse me. We are not actually deleting or passing without changes any of these items. These are just a, in essence, a first reading, or first reading for recommendations. Correct. Okay. And they've been reviewed by the policy committee, and these are the recommendations from that committee. Thank you. So, and also to be clear, and to, to um, jump off that, if the, the recommendations that we have or any edits that we have are, are these, how can folks find what our suggested changes are. Are they posted on the website? They're incorporated in into tonight's the packet. packet. Okay. Just to be clear. Mm -hmm. Okay. On to item G. May I have a motion? 
Michael? Yes, <clears throat> I guess it's my turn. Uh, I move that we approve the following athletic and co-curricular staff nominations for the 2013-2014 school year as listed in the packet under item uh, 7G. I'll second. Thanks. Um, any discussion? I have a quick question. I, I just noticed that we're approving a JV, a girls JV soccer coach and a, and a girls assistant soccer coach, but I don't see on here anywhere where there's a varsity girls soccer coach or a head coach. Is that intentional or is it, it just an omission? It was not included in the information submitted to Andrea, so it was maybe forthcoming, but we didn't have it as of the time we went to print. Okay. They had hired someone. They just hired someone. I think uh, it that's was what I'm thinking. Because they hired a new coach. They hired him. Well, we quite certainly a while should make sure we've approved it if we've hired somebody. We, we <laughs> did. I'm, well, we would have. Yeah. Um, I would have to go back. I think. Yeah. So I'm you could sure check the did. minutes that we have already approved of the last meeting, and you might find it there. Is there any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Um, item H, consider it, um, let's say, can I have a motion, please? Mary. Um, I move that we grant um, the superintendent of schools the authority to hire over the summer. Second. Okay. Any discussion, Meredith? Um, last year when we came to this point and we had administrative positions open, the board requested specifically that we hold a board meeting to approve the administrative positions. Mm -hmm. um, I would welcome that and would think that if that was something you wanted to try to schedule for next week, that we could complete um, that hiring. Um, would, would a quorum of board members be available next week to, yes. Um, yes. to meet? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd that. Thank you okay. for bringing that up. Uh, I will probably be out of town, but if you can, if we can put together a, a okay. quorum, that, that would be great. So, um, do you want to amend the motion, Mary? Let's see, to grant the superintendent to the authority to hire over the summer. Um, how would you suggest With I amend the it? With of the exception of administrative, of administrative position. positions. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll accept that. Which will require board approval. Which will require board approval. Okay. Uh, all those in amendment. favor of the um, am amendment, as the uh, motion as amended. Seven. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, item I, um, I have a nominee from the school board, at least I did. You still do. <laughs> Good, thank you, Joe. I have a nominee um, <laughs> as a school board liaison to the Community Services Advisory Commission. I would like to nominate Joe Morrissey and thank her for... Um, her service. I'll second. May I have a second? Okay. And is there any discussion? No. I think that Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Thank that you. would be me. Well, it's yes. Work ahead. Yeah, I would just note that this was a um, new position that, um, through discussion with our community services um, director and the advisory commission, um, in a meeting that John um, attended couple of months ago now at least, um, just felt that it would be beneficial to have ongoing dialogue between the board and community services mm -hmm. now that community services um, is under the direction, I guess, of the school department. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to the work. Right, and we look forward to hearing, hearing about the work from you. Thank oh, you. And you will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Joe. All those in favor? Okay. I suppose I should raise my own hand here, right? No, you can vote for yourself, especially when you're uh, signing up for a committee responsibility. <laughs> you're encouraged to. Um, consider, uh, I'm sorry, item J, may I have a motion? David. Um, I move that uh, the board authorize the superintendent on behalf of the school district to accept the Health Insurance Task Force recommendations 
for the hiring of two health insurance professionals to review health insurance costs and to authorize the superintendent on behalf of the school district to enter into agreements with these consultants. Second. A second. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion? Yeah, I can just provide a brief uh, overview. Uh, there were um, about a year and a half ago, or maybe a little bit less, uh, the Health Insurance Task Force was created as part of uh, part of the collective bargaining agreement um, to uh, carry out a very specific charge. I would reference you to the. Uh, the uh, most recent uh, teachers contract and as part of that uh, committee's charge um, the recommendation is to hire uh, health insurance consultants to help us carry out or to help the task force carry out the charge so the school board has already approved the charge and the committee members on the health insurance task force David Hellman and myself so this is a um, we thought it would be prudent to bring before the board um, and request, uh, you know, for the board to authorize the superintendent to enter, uh, for, to to allow the district to enter into a contract to to retain those consultants to for on behalf of the work of the health insurance task force. David, could I just add a couple of things? We did uh, the task force picked uh, pursuant to an RFP that was sent out and published. Um, some, uh, and I think we interviewed three or four. We ended up with uh, two different consultants. I would amend my motion to add to that, although it's, I'm not sure we need it, but to also enter into confidentiality agreements with those consultants, c considering that we are mm -hmm. dealing with information that's confidential pursuant to state law, and that's simply prudent. Joe? Uh, David, I'm sorry. Did I mishear you reading the motion in saying that it was the recommending to hire two? Correct. But yet the motion is stated in our agenda says a health. It was stated incorrectly, and I have corrected it. I'm sorry for that. I just was looking for clearance, clarity on the discrepancy. So we need two professional insurance reviewers to review our health insurance company. one of them is doing it for free one of them is charging a fee uh, given the qualifications of both it was decided to have both and presumably they'll work together and at no additional cost and that was the way we decided and that's the way we recommend and then uh, this this is not a budget authorization is this do you know what budget this is? This, how is this funded? You're authorizing the funding through this motion by allowing us to enter into an agreement with these consultants. Um, Do we know what the amount of that fund, uh, funding is? I think Michael remembers. Yeah, it, it'll be uh, up to a maximum of $15,000. And just so you know, it's, I'm sure the service contracts will require on a uh, an hourly rate on a time basis and so forth. When it means up to, it may be less, but it will be no more than. And the other one happens to be hired as offered these services for free. And the, the, so the authorization of the board around the funds is one thing, but the source of the funds is a different thing. So is there a budget line item? There's not a specific line item, but we are able to draw upon um, end of year funds. Okay. So it's um, it's and school I year had... 13 funds. Correct. Okay. Um, I, it, should the motion be amended to cap the the cost? Of $50, I would $1? offer a second motion to say to and to authorize the expenditure of up to fifteen thousand dollars for in total for both contracts. That's not an amendment. That's a second motion. No, that was a second amendment. Just oh, add that amendment. on okay. comma and to authorize. You have that? I do. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Can we ask about who volunteered the services? Um, the person who's doing this for free? I'm hoping Michael remembers the name better than I do. Yeah, we, uh, there, uh, there are uh, firms that we retain. We, we didn't retain individuals. So there's uh, two main base firms uh, that we well, actually haven't retained. That's what we're asking for, for permission to. And we'll, uh, one is uh, Alliant 
um, employee benefits, and the other one is cross insurance. They're two main base firms that um, well, the ha ha health insurance task force, w you know, was comfortable uh, utilizing this as part of this project. So, so Mike, Michael isn't Alliant has people in Maine, but they're more than main base, aren't they? Uh, well, they're, yeah, they're they have main, offices. In yeah. So one's main base and one is a little bit more regional, but they have a place in Maine. As opposed to main base, I guess. Main base means that's where your basic, your basis of your operations are, whereas one's more regional. I is, is that an amendment, David, or is it? <laughs> no, I just, I'm just trying to be more correct than you, Michael, because I can't even remember the names, but I can remember the substance. I would just say before, that we, before we vote that I'm, this, this board has spent considerable time just deliberating over smaller expenditures, and I will support the, the motion as amended because I think it's our fiscal responsibility to explore the possibility that there may be savings Far, which would far exceed the, the, the potentially far exceed the expenditure um, in, that we're trying to uncover through this process. So mm -hmm. the, the, the point of my support, or the, the reason for my support of the, of the proposal is that we may be able to uncover those savings. And um, well, if it helps, there was also a report, a joint task force by the town and school board, I don't know, three or four or five, six years ago, something like that. I can't remember, three. Mary which preliminary found that there would be savings of a fairly significant percentage. Whether or not that is still true today, that's what these experts will tell us. Any further discussion, Joe? That actually leads me to the question of do, does it behoove us to partner with the town to explore similar issues for and whose insurance does this cover? Is it just sure? The, the, uh, the, the town. Uh, well, I'll, I'll let the town speak for themselves. I do know they are pursuing a similar type project, but we'll let. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to speak for them. This is a very specific charge. I would refer you to the um, teachers' contract. It, it's not an open-ended. Um, you know, look for. Uh, all different types of plans. It's a specific charge that basically says, can you uh, maintain the current, substantially similar benefits of the current MEABD plan and secure those benefits at a, um, you know, what would those look like um, under different options? So it's not uh, open-ended. So if, if you want to the specifics, I'll refer you to the charge of uh, that's a part as a side letter in the most in, in the teachers collective bargaining agreement just so everyone has the same expectations so it's just for the teachers collective bargaining agreement it's not for another group of employees which thing it, it's it employees be. that are covered under that insurance so it, it include it's it is it's, more than teachers it's you know staff and actually retirees, um, but spouses, well, yeah. all that. So anyone who's covered under um, that current health insurance plan. Mm -hmm. So given the complexity of it, that's why we are recommending professionals yeah, no. to help guide us through this process. Right. No. So, so. I, I, I highly recommend having somebody whose expertise lies in this area to spend some serious time looking at it. My question was to make sure that we're not um, duplicating efforts on the town that could be otherwise made more efficient, but if it's for a specific collective bargaining unit or a group of employees that are specific to our realm, then that makes sense. Yeah, I, this wouldn't prevent the board from having a, a different type of um, task force to pursue those types of off, uh, options, but I just want to make everyone clear that th this task force, it's, it's not the charge of this task force, just so everyone uh, has the same expectation. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion as amended. Thank you. John, may I interject quickly on a question? Sure. Um, there was a question from item 7G. On Tuesday, April 9th, we had a business meeting where we um, 
approve the hiring of Craig Cannon as the girls' varsity soccer coach. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank God for laptops and Hillman's lack of memory. When was it again? Uh, April. Let me get it was April. An iPad. Tuesday, April 9th. Sorry. 2013. Go iPad. Oh, I thought it was longer than that. Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. I appreciate that. Um, moving on to item K. May I have a motion? I move that we approve the Cape Elizabeth Schools Teacher Certification Educational Technician Authorization, Re Authorization Renewal Plan as amended. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, item eight, committee reports. Do we have any committee reports from committee chairs? No. Okay, item nine. School board agenda requests. Are there any requests for agenda items for future school board meetings? No, okay. Item 10, announcements of upcoming meetings. Next week, to be announced. To be announced. We'll meet again next week. Hopefully they'll be hiring. Decisions to be made. All right, item 11, may I have a motion? Oh, and John, move that we a second. <laughs> Oh, 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 quick question. Oh, jump um, the gun. <laughs> when is our next school board business meeting? It'll be the end of August. Do we? I don't have the date. In, I don't have my mobile device in front of me. So. On like the what? 27th? It would normally be the 27th. It would normally be the 27th. We don't have a June workshop. Okay. And we, we don't meet in July, I want to look, I want to except for the policy committee. All right. The policy <laughs> committee is... <laughs> All right. Did you get your question answered? I did. Okay. Yeah, May I, I have a, a motion? I, I move that we adjourn. All those in... Oh, a second, sorry. <laughs> All those in favor? Everybody. Yay. Yay, happy summer. Happy summer. Thank you. Almost. You might have an internal.